Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. Hi, my name is Senzeng Ashlem Bogazi. I've been teaching at Bosman Primary for the past three years and I teach grade twos. Um, the sequence of my lesson was that we first started off just uh, for the aim of warming up their brains a bit and to also just get them speaking and into the lesson. Started counting off in twos, forwards and backwards. And whilst they count, they cross the midline. So that's the purpose of them moving their, their hands and arms from right to left, back and forth that way. We are going to put our thinking caps on, nice and tight. Cousin, you're going to help us count in twos from two to one hundred. All right, ready? One, two, three. So first of all, she started off with counting and this is something that is prescribed by the CAPS curriculum um, so it happens at the beginning of every maths lesson and it really is a wonderful way just to get learners centred, grounded and, and their brains warmed up. The wonderful thing that she also did is that she really encouraged learners to count while doing a movement and this movement helps centre the learners as, as they are they're crossing the midline. Um, after that we turned our attention to uh, the terminology that we were going to be using for the rest of the lesson. So that was plus, that was multiplication, that was add, and I also just introduced the, the symbols. And um, may, we also discussed the difference between a plus sign and a, a, a time sign. Um, we also just did a, a short story about a repeated addition, so it was more of like a story sum. Friday, I saw Anako. She went. It's one of the stores with Alyssa. Anako and Alyssa decided that they were in the mood to buy sweets. And they asked Abdud to come and join them in buying sweets. When they got there, they decided that they were going to buy two sweets each. So Anako got two sweets for herself. Show us your sweets. Is it two sweets? <coughs> Alyssa got two sweets. And Abdul Dayan got himself two sweets as well. Show us your sweets. Hold them up. How many sweets do we have all together? Without shouting, how do we know how many sweets we have to, all together? Without shouting out the answer, how do I work it out? Two plus two plus two equals Six. So she said Anako has two, Alyssa has two, and Dayan has two. So it's two plus two plus two is six. Um, after that, we talked about now we're going to go into groups and we're going to rotate. And at different stations, we're working, dealing with different numbers, different number ranges, and um, worksheets as well. And the worksheets will have a sentence. It will also have an addition sum as well as an, a, a multiplication sum as well. On the mat, I worked on with one group on their own. So there's three separate groups, the stars, the diamonds, and the hearts, and they all mixed ability. So I was working with one group on the mat and just focusing on the questions with them and just making sure that they're able to support one another. Although they were, it was learner-led and I was just there just for guidance. Diamonds, you are gonna do the, these sums counting in twos, okay? Groups of two. 2 plus 2 plus 2, you're going to work together. You're going to work together with your partner, okay? Then I'm going to work with the hearts. We're going to do counting in fours, counting in fives. Adding fours and adding fives, okay? 
So the physical objects that I used were mostly, mainly the cups and the counters. Um, that helps a lot of the learners because a lot of them are still very concrete based. They need a lot of kinesthetic action. They need a lot of things to be touching and holding in order to see what it is. Instead of just working with numbers first, they actually have to hold the number in their hand. Okay, so I need to count in what? In fours. Let's count in fours to add. Okay, let's do the next sum. Well done. Let's read the sum together. Suppose this one is four. Eight. Eight groups of four equals. Right. Ms. Mbukazi in her lesson really catered to the very many different learning styles that, that learners have. So first of all, we saw um, wonderful flashcards so that learners could see the difference between um, the plus sign and the multiplication sign. There were also different words written down on, on the flashcards, so this helps the learners understand the, the mathematical discourse that will be presented in the lesson. Um, the difficulty sometimes in, 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 a, in, in a lesson that sometimes comes up is that a learner doesn't always understand you and it's not because of their ability or anything but it's simply just the language thing. Given the context in South Africa that we have different home languages so a child, English might be their second or third language. So what I do during the lesson is that yes there's, there's flashcards and that's mostly in English but I've code switched to just to try to make it more relatable to the learner and more understandable to the learner and they always understand better in their own language. Multiplication sign Miami, city four times two. You have only got to enter for nine. So you enter for nine. Can I am a group of four? You have only got to bamba four. Bamba gana no ma o o two bamba. The other thing that Ms Mbukazi does is that she frequently code switches. So if we find learners that aren't really understanding, it's not necessarily that they're not able to understand. It's more because of a language barrier. So Ms Mbukazi then is able to um, code switch into Zulu or Tosa and, and explain to the learners um, whose home language that is uh, a little bit more in depth in their own language so that they are able to then understand that concept and grasp it and then translate it back into English. The other thing that Ms Mbukazi has done is she's very ex effectively set up pairs of learners and these pairs of learners have the same home language and often she's paired them up as a stronger learner and a weaker learner and what she does is she really encourages these pairs of learners to chat to each other in their home language for a little bit of additional support so that they are able to really understand the mathematical concept in their home language which then um, really does help them with, with their overall understanding of the concept. At the end of the lesson, I wrapped up by just um, giving them, or rather them giving me examples of what is easier to add when I just multiply it instead of adding it to itself over and over and it ends up being this long train of sums. How do I shorten it? And then we also uh, had a take home application where they have to go home and just look at things in that, that frame of mind of how do I count all the toes in my family? How do I count all the fingers in my family? If I wanted to count all the eyes that ha are together here in this class, would I be able to say two plus two plus two plus two plus two? And how many children are there in this class? 30. 38 children. Will I be able to say two plus two plus two plus two plus two the whole time? <coughs> what is a faster and better way of doing it, Mikhail? You can say two times 38. I really enjoyed the way that Ms Mbukazi wrapped up the class and, and she did provide some differentiation on, on what uh, repeated addition is and how it can lead to multiplication and she so cleverly introduced um, some everyday examples. So she said when you go home please go and, and count how many eyes your family has and because we know that each person has two eyes you can very easily count in twos and then as a shortcut, you can start to think about, instead of repeating your addition, move on to multiplication. So that's a great 
a really great way of, of being able to pull what you've done in a maths class in, in quite an abstract sense into a very real real life situation that, that the learners can really identify with.